Uh, in 2005, uh, not that long ago, I think it was 2005, Governor Romney, when told about the plan, said it was reasonable and, quote, not amnesty. Um, we need to get beyond this. We need to sit down together and work this out. And we have to figure out a way of addressing the issue of the other 10 million. Uh, by the way, it was Secretary Chertoff that said there's a 2 million who have committed crimes in this country. We have to get them out of this country. And of course, it's not automatic. We have to do many things in order to qualify. And it's an earned ability to do so. Many will be deported, unfortunately, or fortunately, depend on how you look at it. Uh, but again, instead of fighting about who's for this and who's for that. We have a national security challenge. We have an issue that's de facto amnesty because of the 12 million people who are still here illegally. And we need to sit down together and the kind of conversation the rest of us had last night about how we can come up with a real solution and address it and address it uh, in a way that we can be proud of at the end of the day. Governor Huckabee, at an earlier debate, you had a memorable exchange with Gov Governor Romney about your plan that would have allowed the children of illegals uh, in-state tuition to college. Uh, and at the time you said we shouldn't punish children uh, for the actions of their parents. Uh, on the other hand, shortly after that, you came out with a very tough immigration plan which mandates that all illegals must leave the country and return to their home within 120 days if they want to become legals. Uh, aren't you, in effect, in that plan punishing those very children that you said you didn't want to punish? Not at all, because as long as those children are here, and people question their authenticity for being here. They live in the shadows. They live hiding. No person living in the United States of America, Chris, ought to live in the shadows, ought to live in fear, ought to hide. The beauty of this country is we live with our heads up. We live with dignity. We live with pride. We live with honor. And as long as people are living illegally, they can't. And I know I'm going to be questioned. Do I, do I still stand by that idea that we treat the children differently who didn't commit a crime? And, and let me just be very clear. Yes, I do stand beside that because I don't think you punish a child for what a parent did. Now, the fact is, under the plan that I put forth, and it's tough, it says build a fence. It does say, after you have a fence, I believe built by American laborers with American uh, material, people should be asked to go back and get in the back of the line. The only place to get in the back of the line is in their home country. There's no line here. How about the kids in school? Them too or not? Mitt, I, I'm talking to Chris right now, if you don't mind. <laughs> but that uh, is actually a question I was going to ask. You can ask it, but you know, I, I've decided that I, I, you're the moderator of the debate, not Mitt. He, he's tried to engage me in this, and, and I, I appreciate you very much, but I believe I'll let Mitt, I mean, uh, Chris be the moderator here. What, what about the children in school? <laughs> well, here's the point. If the families go back, they're going to take their children with them. Right. And when those children go back and then they get in line and they get back into the United States, then this issue is resolved. The reason we have the problem we have is because our federal government has broken it, has caused it to be dysfunctional, and we've got to get it fixed. The one thing I do agree, whether it's with Senator McCain, Mayor uh, Giuliani, Fred Thompson, anyone here, is that this problem isn't going to get solved by seeing if we can throw flash words at each other. It's going to get solved when we sit down like reasonable human beings and decide that we've got to do something that fixes the problem by sealing the border first and foremost. But I absolutely believe that as a governor, I had to educate those kids. That wasn't an option for me. The mayor had the same situation in New York. By law, you educate children. And also, it doesn't make sense to turn kids out on the street because then you're going to end up with a much bigger but, problem but, but than governor, the education I, I, I want, I'm going to give you 30 seconds because okay. we need to move on. But uh, 30 seconds. If you have a, the child of an illegal immigrant and he is in high school in Little Rock and now under the Huckabee, President Huckabee's plan, he and his family all have to move back to Mexico, aren't you punishing that kid? He's a no. sophomore in high school, and now he's been put, dragged out of Little Rock, and he's I living guess in Tijuana. I guess his could leave him there if he's a senior in high school, but I think most families, particularly if you understand about most of the immigrant families, they're a family-loving people. These are not people that want to split their families up. They want to keep their families together. They come here for their families, Chris. They come here so their kids will have an opportunity. They come here so their kids will have groceries to eat. These, these are people who don't come here because uh, they're escaping wealth so they can come to poverty. They're escaping poverty so they can have a chance to have wealth. And the point I'm making is that if we're going to have this problem fixed, let's actually fix it. And, and all the rhetoric that we've thrown out about who's more for amnesty and who's less for amnesty, I mean, a lot of that's pure nonsense. What we need to do is say, seal the border, have a plan to get in the back of the line, 
no free rides. We won't have amnesty. And I think every one of us here, including John McCain, agrees with that. Get a system that we can live with, and then let's don't ever make this mistake again. We all love to invoke the name of Ronald Reagan. Let's not forget, with all due respect, Ronald Reagan was the one who signed the amnesty bill back in the 80s that's given us the mess now. We all love him. We all want to be like him. But uh, even Ronald Reagan can make mistakes. And we now need to fix the mistake. All right. Mayor Giuliani, uh, back in 1994, and I'm not going to go through the quote, but you <laughs> talked then about how much, you, if you work hard, we want you in this city, talking about illegal immigrants. Now you have a very tough plan, seal the border, crack down on employers. Why and when did you change your view about the value of immigrants? Well, the, the, the problem in New York City was I had 400,000 illegal immigrants. The federal government could deport no more than 2,000 a year. I had to deal with them in a humane, decent, and sensible way. And I did. I let them go to school. I let them report crime. And I let them uh, uh, go to hospitals to get treatment which were humane, decent things to do. My predecessor mayors had done the same thing, and I'm very proud that we did that. We also turned over every criminal to the, to the immigration service to have them thrown out of, the, out of the city, thrown out of the country. And the immigration service couldn't throw out even you know, a percentage of the numbers we would turn over to them. The, every single one of us sitting here, including Ronald Reagan, has made mistakes in this illegal immigration area because this is very complicated and very difficult. The most important thing is, who has the best plan to fix it right now? I believe I have the best plan to fix it right now. It is a plan to put a fence, technological as well as physical, to warn the Border Patrol of people approaching the border, to use a border stat system to stop them from coming in in the first place. We can only stop this at the border. And then to set up a tamper-proof ID card that everyone would have to get. There should be a rule about coming into the United States. The rule should be like this. You have to identify yourself if you want to come into the United States. Every other country has this rule. We should have that rule. If you get your tamper-proof ID card, you can come in, you can work, you pay taxes. If you want to become a citizen, you get online. You don't get preference over anyone else. And at the end of the line, you're going to have to be able to read English, write English, and speak English. It would take four or five years to accomplish this. It needs to be a comprehensive solution, but it needs to begin. And I think this is the, the lesson we all learned this year, John and all of us learned, going around the country. It has to begin by securing the borders with the fence, technological, border patrol, border stat system. We can do this. We can stop people from coming in and teach them to come in the right way. And we're not doing any favors for the illegals who come in here and work in this surreptitious way. It is a horrible life. It's a difficult life. If we can make this change, this country will be a much better country, and we will preserve all the wonderful things about <coughs> immigration, which is one of the things that's made us so great. Senator Thompson, you say that both Governor Romney and Mayor Giuliani are latecomers to this whole issue. That well, can, I, can I add my friend uh, Governor Huckabee to that list? <laughs> okay. Uh, you say that you were walking the walk. Time to talk. That's <laughs> fine. With you me. say that you were walking the walk when before they were even talking the talk. I Make your case. I couldn't have said it better, and I guess I did, didn't I? Yes, you did. No, that's right. Well, uh, my, my friends here on both sides really had... Uh, had policies that basically uh, were, uh, if, you, if you make it in, uh, you're kind of home free. And, and in large part was based upon compassion. And, and uh, there's been a lot of talk, rightfully so, in terms of children. My concern is what we're saying to the other parents and children that are in uh, Mexico, for example, now. Are we encouraging, are our policies encouraging the next generation of people to take the risk of going across the border and being killed or being raped or being herded into to the back of a van or something like that to try to make it across the border? It's not good for them. It's not good for our country. We can't be dependent upon the next generation or another 12 million of illegals, as the governor says, living uh, in the shadows with less education, uh, uh, many of whom do not speak the, ling uh, the, the, the language at a time when uh, our entitlement programs are already overburdened, at a time when uh, uh, people are, are talking about disparities of economic conditions and, and uh, the fact that education plays a large part in, in, in that. It's not good for our country. It's not good for them. And when I hear the president of Mexico chide us for enforcing the border, you know, I would say to him, what does it say about the leadership of a country when uh, the exportation of their own citizens is an economic necessity? Uh, they need to look at home at, at their own policy. We're engaging in